I'll give you an example. This is a good example. I worked with this woman named Joan McCord, and she was one of America's great criminologists and uh, a, uh, a, uh, a woman who was involved as a faculty member when very few women were. She participated in a study in, in, in Boston, in Somerville, which was a working class community back in the 30s. They did the first large scale intervention to deflect children from a criminal pathway. So they're looking at deprived inner city kids thinking they have a higher probability than average to become criminal and, and to suffer all sorts of other negative consequences as well, or to inflict them. And perhaps you could intervene at an early age and, and stop that, or slow it down at least. And so they put together a very comprehensive set of interventions, um, parental lessons for the parents, uh, lessons for the kids, uh, health and nutrition interventions, uh, a whole broad spectrum of all the things this you think. This was in Canada? You, this was in the United States, in okay, Somerville, Massachusetts, a famous study, the Somerville study. Um, one of the first large-scale psychological public health interventions, I would say, and targeting a problem that was troublesome for left-wing people mm -hmm. and right-wing people mm -hmm. alike. The right-wingers would think, well, fewer criminals, that's good, and the left-wingers would think, well, let's do some remediation at the root of the cause. So everyone was hoping this worked, and everyone was happy about it. The kids thought it was good, the parents thought it was good, the researchers thought it was good. Uh, they also put kids, they took the kids out of the inner city in the summer and put them out in camp because of nature and all of that, and wouldn't that be a nice break for them? And then they did the analysis. And the kids in the intervention group did worse on virtually every measure. Worse. Like substantially worse. And so they were all shocked and seriously shocked in a major way. In fact, Joan McCord was so shocked she spent the rest of her life going around talking about what had happened. It turns out that it's a really bad idea to group antisocial prone kids together in camps in the summer because they learn to compete with each other in terms of the manifestation of antisocial mm -hmm. behavior, and they get better at it. It's like criminal camp. And so that single consequence of one part of the intervention was so negative that it overwhelmed the entire study and, and produced the negative results. So McCord, she was part of a group of very, very able social scientists that I worked with when I was in Montreal, a broad group, you know, and it was an international group. And they beat the drum all the time, never, 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 never do a large-scale intervention without building in an evaluation. 25% of your intervention budget should be evaluation because you do not know that your stupid intervention, which you think will do what it, you think it will do, that's just a guess. It's a guess. And it could go wildly wrong in 10 ways you don't predict. And if you've ever run studies in a lab trying to predict how people are going to behave, you figure this out real soon because they don't behave the way, what was the old idea? Put a lab rat in a cage under controlled conditions, and the rat will do exactly what it damn well chooses to do. And that's true for rats, it's even more true for people. And so these large-scale interventions, which the pandemic lockdown was certainly one of those, is like, and this is the conservative objection, the law, iron law of unintended consequences. Do something large-scale to systems you don't understand at all, not a bit, 